Welcome to tutorial to Form 1120S. If you're looking for something quick and specific, down in the description down below, there are timestamps for you to take a look and find your information really quickly in this long video. So Form 1120S is mainly made for business owners or if you are planning to start up a new business, this is the video for you. And also, this video on Form 1120S also ties back to other forms, such as my previous videos on Forms W-2, 1099, and 1099 NEC, all other types of 1099. Also, this relates to the previous video I recently made, which you guys should go check out after this, Form 1120. Now, Form 1120S, this mainly relates to business owners. This also explains why certain business owners, or a lot of business owners and startups are really wealthy, compared to if you're an employee, for say. If you find this video really entertaining and helpful, and maybe you want to start up a business in the future, make sure to share this video. And most importantly, Click the subscribe button down below and a like button. Now let's begin the tutorial on how to fill out Form 1120S when you start a new business. For a non-US individual, they cannot be a shareholder. They cannot hold shares in an S corporation. S corporation can only have one level of stock, meaning you only can have common stock. You cannot have a preferred stock. One benefit for S Corporation is they, they have zero tax rate for federal purpose and the tax return due on the 15 days of the third month after the year end. So majority of the S Corporation, they have calendar year end. And under some special circumstances, uh, some S Corporation could apply for fiscal year end, but uh, that is really, really uh, happen. Well, if you don't have enough time to file the S Corporation tax return form 1120 by the 15th of the third month, which is March 15th every year, you can file a form 7004 as extension to file the tax return for six months. In this case, uh, the S Corporation mostly would not have uh, income tax. Uh, under so certain special circumstances, if this company used to be a C Corporation and changed to an S Corporation, there may be a uh, viewing gain tax. Uh, those are uh, special cases. So how to prepare Form 1120S? First of all, like a C corporation and partnership, LLC, you need to prepare bookkeeping first, meaning you need to organize your expense, income, asset, and liability, and comply a financial statements such as balance sheet and income statement or profit and loss statement. Then you figure out uh, the book income you have and the tax book income you have, meaning that there are certain expenses are not deductible for tax purpose or certain income is not includable for income tax purpose. So you need to know those items before you can file or prepare your Form 1120S. Today we're gonna just talk about, at high level, talk about how to prepare this 1120S, how 1120S look like. So 1120S total have five pages. On page one, basically you put in the name, uh, you put in the, right here, you put in the name, address, and when is the date you become an S, S corporation. And you also fill in the business activity code and uh, federal ID number, when do you incorporate it. So why do you need to have an S election elective day? meaning you don't form an S corporation, so you need to form the company as an LLC, LLC or a C corporation first, and then make an election and change that to a S corporation. So right here, line G and J tell the, uh, tell the IRS if this is a first return, final return, you have changed your name and address and you uh, make an election the election terminated or you file amended tax return. So on page one, basically you answer, you fill in not the total taxable income. You only fill in the ordinary income. Why is that important? Because all this income, S corporation is a non-tax entity. Uh, you don't pay tax at the corporate level and all the income you presented right here in expenses will be passed through to the shareholder and the shareholder will pick up this income or loss on to report on the 1040 the individual tax return 
So remember, this page is for the ordinary income, meaning uh, you don't pass this item one by one to the shareholder. You pass that total number right here, line 21, the total number will pass through. But however, you need to tell the service uh, how much gross receipts you have and how much returns and allowance and uh, what is the uh, cost of goods sold and you have other gain, other income. So this is the first section. You put in all the income, normal income and other income. So from line 7 to line 20, you put in all the expenses, which is ordinary in nature. So passive income, you don't pay here because pa passive income uh, or in other investment income, subject to they may be at different tax rate. So that's why those items have to pass to the shareholder one by one. So right here, you have a total income on line 21, meaning six, uh, line 6 minus line 20, 20 then you're going to get a total ordinary business income on line 21. So right here, and some of the company, they may, subject to uh, income tax, uh, uh, they, they may have to pay EMP tax or they may have to pay uh, billing gain tax. So that is the summary right here. But this section uh, mostly uh, won't be used by most of the small corporation. So at the bottom right here, the taxpayer is going to sign the tax return and, and the pay preparer is going to sign the tax return. So this is at page one. So page two is Schedule B. Schedule B is where the IRS used to collect uh, general information. So the information such as what accounting method you use, on line one, are you a cash method, accrual methods. So the method right here, once you checked it, you cannot change it every year. If you have to change the method, you need to file 3115 to request a method change to the I from the IRS. And then right here, you tell them what you do, and uh, three, four, five, right here, basically, you tell the IRS, uh, this company's owner, or who own this company, or who this company own, have investment in. And then line six and to line 11 right here, we basically just have to go through it, answer all the questions one by one. So any one of this question can go to another form of schedule. So what depends on your answer, answer yes or no. So on page three, uh, at the top of the page three is the final section of schedule B. See it right here, there's a question they asked, did the corporation make any payment in 2022 that required it to file Form 1099? So this question is important. And, and actually, every question is important, but mostly this one happened to um, almost every shareholder or every corporation. If you hire people, outside contractor, and pay them $600 or more, to provide service for you, then you need to check yes, and you also need to tell them that if you file the 1099. If you check yes and you check no right here, that could be an issue. So on page three, Schedule K, right here is another section you report income and expenses. The income and expenses reported on Schedule K are the separately passed through item, meaning that all these items could subject to uh, limitation uh, for tax law purpose or subject to different tax rate so they cannot be combined uh, with the ordinary business income because the shareholder could receive different K-1 or have investment in different partnership as corporations so when they come they need to combine all this separately reported item on their own tax return and then uh, apply the limitation on it. So that's why we need to separate them. So on page one, we report ordinary business income. On uh, line uh, 20 or 21, that number need to be uh, transferred over here. And then you add all this separately reported item at the end. Those are your total taxable income. And look at, let's look at a couple of this separately reported item. Look, um, interest income right here. You have dividend income. Uh, you also have uh, 
uh, rental income also right here because why rental income have to pass through separately? Because rental income by nature is uh, passive income. So passive income or uh, passive only can offset the passive loss. Uh, the passive loss cannot offset the ordinary income or have a limitation. So that's why that item need to be uh, passed through separately. So on line on page four, page four right here is uh, line 18. That is the continuation of Schedule K. Line 18, the number reported on line 18 is the total income. The passive income plus ordinary income, that is the total income of the year. That income will be uh, separated by each shareholder's uh, proportion ownership and then will pass on to their tax return. And the shareholder going to pay tax on the income, not the S corporation. So on page four, there's also a Schedule L. Schedule L is where you report balance sheet per book. So remember earlier we mentioned that first you have to prepare the financial statement before you can prepare the tax return. That is one of the area that you have to report how much asset liability, uh, cash, accumulated income you have in the company. So you need to report the beginning of the tax year and end of the tax year. So the beginning of the tax year should equal to what you have last year. You reported for last year, the, end, uh, the ending balance of last year. Now the last page, page five, the main form of 1120 is Schedule M1 and Schedule M2. Schedule M1 is the same as what we talk about for C Corporation is a reconciliation of income per book with income a loss per tax return. So you have your financial statement, a profit and loss statement. You could have a total taxable income zero. But however, for tax, you may have an income because certain items cannot be deducted for tax purpose, such as uh, entertainment. Entertainment is not deductible. A meals, business meals, depends on the year. Mostly only can deduct 50%. So those items will be added back to the income, will increase your taxable income. In the, in the, left, uh, the left area in Schedule M1. So in the right area right here are the items that, that could be income to you, to the financial, but it's not income, not taxable for uh, tax reporting purpose, such as tax exempted interest. Those are not taxable. So you put it right here to subtract from your book income, and you will come up with a, um, a taxable income right here on line A. This number will eventually tie to right here, Schedule K. Remember, we'll talk about the total income, uh, passive and ordinary. It's going to add up to line 18. So this number will tie to the line 8 number from Schedule M1. On page 5, there's also a, a very important schedule, Schedule M2. Schedule M2 is an analysis of accumulated adjustment accounts. So we call that triple A account. So the triple A account is where we use to measure uh, the taxable income the company have and how much income you earn already taxed it and how much you already take out from the company. So oftentimes, uh, as, as corporation shareholder will come to me and ask, uh, hey, can I uh, withdraw money from my S corporation, from a company? Yes, it, because the money, maybe the money already uh, taxed it by the shareholder. Because let's say you make a million dollar on line eight right here, this million dollar going to pass on at the same year, pass on to the shareholder. The shareholder pay tax on that portion. So even though on the tax return right here, you have a million dollars, but you already pay tax. Even the company doesn't pay tax in the shareholder already pay tax on it. So you can take that money out as a distribution and report it on line seven right here. And then on line eight, there is a balance showing that how much you, you still have um, in the company which you can distribute to yourself without paying tax. This number, if it's a negative, meaning that you take money more than you can distribute, then you may have income. So let's talk about Schedule K. Schedule K1 right here is, a, is not the main form, 
but as the you will see the schedule K one in every eleven twenty S because once you calculate the taxable income, then that number will be separated into K one. Depends how many shareholder you have. If you only have one shareholder, so th that the allocation percentage is one hundred percent. And the ordinary income report on page one is going to come to here, and all the separate item on Schedule K on page, uh, I believe it's page three, right here. Page three, right here, will go to K one. Will drop into different line in the box over here. So this K one reported to the IRS, and also a copy will be sent to the shareholder. The shareholder get this Schedule K one. And we'll drop all this number into their tax return, 1040 uh, accordingly. So they pay tax as a shareholder. So this is it. It's a very quick and brief uh, introduction to Form 1120S. So we have a quick summary right here. So all the incomes and deductions you, you report on page 1 and 3. Page 1 is the ordinary income and loss. Page 3 include all the separately passed through item. In pass through income or expenses. Page four is where you report asset and liability. And page two, basically, you give all the information about your company to the IRS. And uh, page five, the last page, where you report reconcile the book income to the taxable income. And the AAA account, where you use to track all your income that is taxed and how much you can distribute or how much is already distributed. So that's it. So if you need help, make sure you go talk to your uh, tax advisor about how to fill out this 1120S. We can have other section to talk about each page, how to report uh, ordinary income and expenses, pass through items. Thank you for watching.